I'll do anything for my family. Anything. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. If someone hurts your family member or someone you love, it can be worse than bad things happening to you. These are revenge stories from family members that refuse to turn the other cheek. In this episode, we start off with a loving man that protects his wife with poison, a rage-fueled son made father's murderer go homeless. Followed by a family that put their focus on a female abuser. Lastly, a group of alcohol-fueled Londoners meet the guy who assaulted one of their kids. Be sure to avenge that like cookie, for Uncle Royal AI. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. This isn't my story, but it's about my father's revenge on my mom's abusive dad. So some details may be a bit off. My parents were born in a rural part of Mexico, in a small town. An important thing to note, is that the area they lived in had a problem with scorpions and the nearest hospital wasn't for a few hours. Life wasn't exactly easy for them. My mom didn't get far in school and neither did my dad. She had to stop after sixth grade, while my dad didn't finish fourth grade of elementary school. Having to find any sort of work to help support the family made life tough. My mom grew up with a strict set of parents and her dad was prone to violent outburst, while her mom was emotionally and sometimes physically abusive. My dad grew up with a single mother. My parents met one night when they were about 15 years old, and from what my mom said, they hit off right away. Nothing romantic, but they quickly became great friends. My dad's mom doted on my mom and saw her as her own. But for some reason, my dad was never invited to her parents' house. For the next two years, life for my mom was still really difficult, especially since her father started drinking frequently and her mother became even more distant. There were times where my dad saw something was wrong, simply because of how she walked and how she started to flinch with the tiniest touch. She also never had him visit her house and would spend a lot of time at his. Pretty soon they officially started dating. One day my mom's mother simply disappeared with no explanation. This caused her dad to become even more abusive. She endured all of this because she simply couldn't leave him. Until when she was 18 years old, she discovered she was pregnant with me. When she told her dad, he slapped her across the face, got his belt and brutally assaulted her while calling her all sorts of names. She managed to get out before anything worse happened. She ran to my dad's house, where she explained everything to him. How her life had been total hell for such a long time and how she was pregnant. He knew right then and there, he had to get revenge for all the years of abuse she endured. He thought that simply turning the other cheek to him wouldn't be enough, he had to make sure he was taken care of for good. My dad knew many people who worked with getting rid of scorpions, and which ones would be the most dangerous and lethal. He went looking and found a few with the highest chance of lethality. The following day, he was able to sneak into my mom's house and put the scorpions underneath the abusive dad's bed covers and went home. The following day, my mom went to his house with my dad as her security. But they found him dead in his bed. She was horrified and shocked, my dad pretended to be shocked too. They got married soon after I was born. They moved to the States after applying and getting accepted for a work visa. He kept this secret for many years, and when he finally told her, she was both upset and happy. He was just glad she finally told him everything that one fateful night, that changed both their lives. This story is about my dad, an honest man, who worked tirelessly to provide for me and my family. Although he worked outrageous shifts, he never complained or said anything in front of me or the rest of the family. He is, or rather was a truck driver. Last summer I had the chance to go with him to his work and see how things worked, during that period we got increasingly closer. He would drive for up to 16 hours straight and when I'd ask him to take a break, he'd always tell me he couldn't. It often got to the point where he would doze off while still driving and I'd wake him up before anything bad happened. After about a month of going to work with him, he finally confessed to me why he couldn't stop driving before arriving at his destination. 
The reason was that if he stopped he'd get fired. I told him that this was illegal and that he should go to the police with proof. You see, his boss had told him that if he ever went to the police, he'd not only fire him, but he'd also make sure he'd never find another job. I was shocked. I asked him if he'd rather die than providing for us. His eyes started to tear up. My dad, the man I'd never seen crying before, started crying like a little baby saying how much he loved us all and how he couldn't stop working. I understood where he was coming from, his main goal was to provide and the only way he knew how, was this job, so I told him to at least be careful. It was three months ago, when I got a call from our local police department notifying me of my dad's passing. He drove right into a steel barrier and died instantly. I was furious. This piece of filth was threatening my dad resulting to his death and now he was going to get away with it? I couldn't think straight for a week. Then it came to me. You see, truck drivers have time cards with their names on them, something like IDs, and I remembered full well that my dad had two. You were only allowed to have one. When you drove for up to four hours with one time card plugged in and you didn't take a break, the time card would save this in its memory as a violation. If the police stopped you and checked the card, you'd be screwed. His boss made him use two cards, one for himself and one that was the boss's, so he could drive without taking these breaks. I thought that if I sued my father's boss for intolerable working conditions, workplace harassment, violating the law, violation of labor rights and more, I would have the proof to have a case. And I was correct. The trial was extremely short. I had a good lawyer that collected the evidence we needed to make a case, and last Thursday my father's boss was found guilty of five out of seven charges he was facing. My family got $5 million in compensation and yesterday I found out that the boss lost his house and his wife left him. Although we got the money, I still believe that my father died for nothing. I didn't get the closure I was craving for but at least my family won't be hungry. I love you dad. My story begins with Olivia. I've known her for a long time. Since 6th grade to adolescence. We've always been good friends and are the kind of friends that flirt with each other for fun, but not past that. We lost contact after high school, which was a few months ago. I bumped into her at the local big box store. We talked for a bit and we swapped numbers so we could hang out. A few days later, I find out she's dating this guy, who I'll call Rusty, because he's a bad person and I don't like Rust. So Rusty and my brother knew each other and would hang out together. Rusty starts telling my brother how he's sleeping with this girl and he's basically using her for a place to stay for a few days, until he gets his own place. While he was showing my brother some grotesque pictures of her at work, my brother knew who it was right away. He asked Rusty to forward him the pics, of course he obliged. My brother sent me the pics and told me how he got them. I made sure to call Olivia and told her to come over and that we needed to have a talk about something important. About 45 minutes later Olivia gets to my house, she finds me in an angry state and asks what happened. I didn't dance around it and showed her the pictures right away. I told her Rusty works with my brother and he sent them to him, while bragging that he was using her for a place to live. Quick side note I forgot to mention, Olivia is a spitfire when you cross her. So she gets mad and calls Rusty immediately. She goes all out screaming over the phone for 45 straight minutes. Rusty fails to realize that the store he works at, has Super HD cameras facing the counters because it's been robbed nine times. So I call the store's manager, and tell her that Rusty is showing not safe for work pictures to employees and possibly customers as well. The manager pulls the camera footage from the time in question, and can clearly see Rusty showing pictures to other employees. She also saw him watching adult material during his shift. So he gets a three-week suspension and gets a formal write-up. He's now one foot out the door and about to be two out. The state has also been investigating the $300 missing scratch tickets from the store. They came down on him as well for unlawful distribution of adult media. The real revenge didn't even start yet. Olivia wanted her share of the pie. She wanted to let him hang a bit in desperation and doubt for a few days, before telling him it was over and dumped him. He didn't take too kindly to this and started threatening her. 
My dad is the owner of a local transport business. They do cabs, limos and more. During a conversation with him, I tell him about the situation with Olivia and that Rusty threatened her. Most of the employees at the station have met Olivia, and they all really liked her. My dad was already planning on offering her a job before all this. He recalls Rusty and know he uses their cab service regularly. Well, Rusty called to get a cab to Olivia's apartment like he did every weekend. While I took the cab and picked Rusty up, I told him we had to swing by the cab station, because I left my phone there. We pull up and I walk in. Olivia was waiting at the station and I tell her he's in the cab. Dad comes out from the back and sees him in the cab. He goes to his computer and uses the remote for the cab and shuts it down. So I go to tell him, the cab had a malfunction, and he needs to wait inside the station for a few minutes while we fix it. Rusty goes inside and sees Olivia sitting at my desk, with a dozen roses on top and a big card that says love you. I actually bought them for my grandma, because she was almost back from a trip to South America. Rusty saw her, immediately flipped out and lunged at Olivia. Big mistake. My dad is about 6 feet 6 inches and 315 pounds of muscle. Rusty grabbed Olivia by the neck and before he knew what happened. Dad had his booty on the floor and pinned him down. Another cab driver, we call the Godfather, because he has the Bronx accent, picks Rusty up and pulls him outside and tied him to the pole by the building. This pole is right next to the sprinkler system for the lawn. I turned it on full blast and left Rusty there, until the cops came to get him. Now 95% of the cops in our town know my family, as this is a rather small town and we all get along great. The footage of him being tied to a pole mysteriously disappeared from the evidence lockers after that night. He was released on bond and had to go to court. There was a thunderstorm that day and he doesn't want to walk 8 miles. I still don't understand why he did this, instead of asking someone else to drive him. But he actually called my dad's cab company to get a ride to the courthouse. Big mistake. The driver drove extra careful because the roads were flooded by 4 inches of rain and visibility was low due to fog. Rusty was 45 minutes late to his hearing and was held in contempt of court plus got charged with assault, trespassing and possession, because he had cocaine on him. Let's say the judge threw the book at him. He gave him 10 years, but would reduce it to 5 if he told authorities who his dealer was. Rusty tried to blame me, but it didn't go over well so he came clean and got 5 years. From what I've heard from my buddy, who's a guard, Rusty spent the first two weeks of his five years in the hospital, because he got into a fight and lost. He was put into the cell with a guy, that was known for beating the doo-doo out of guys who abuse women and children. And he's the yard skank meaning, he gets the worst jobs and anytime it's a two-man job, he gets pinned on it by himself. Word travels fast and poor Rusty found out just how bad it can be. This happened two to three months ago, so there are some limited details. My dad has earned a lot of respect in our local area, as he will always help his friends with anything they need. Without exaggeration, there is a fairly large number of regulars at our local pub that would happily do the same for him. And I mean it in a sense that they some would even risk prison time to look after my parent, my sister and me. Anyways, I do a lot of walking when I'm home and at university. So this day, I was walking through our local park at home and I noticed someone following me. Basically, I'm more or less bricking it as I'm not willing to get my phone out, in case he takes it and I'm in the least populated area of the park. I was sure we were the only two people. I decide to speed up even more, so that hopefully more people will act as a deterrent to get this guy off my back. The guy reacts by starting to yell at me, saying he needs help as his brother got stabbed. The strange thing is that he was talking perfectly calm and relaxed and prior to him following me into a secluded area, I saw him chatting casually with someone. He started to catch up and I told him to leave me alone. He said nothing, he immediately kicked me, trying to sweep my legs away, making me land with my full weight on my left knee. I get this adrenaline rush and got up, because I didn't want to be kicked to a pulp. Far away. I noticed a man walking his dog entering this area of the park and instinctively ran towards him for safety. The man attacking me saw this and fled the scene. 
The dog walker allowed me to get to the cafe, where I called my sister. She and my mom came to pick me up from there and took me home. After this whole ordeal, my knee was extremely painful. I also put an ice pack on my ankle, because him booting it as hard as he could made it bend wrong. Luckily I didn't break anything. Anyways, my mom called my dad who was at the pub with his mates, the ones who are willing to do anything to keep my sister and I safe. My mom relayed a very basic description for me to him and not so long after he was home due to worry. My ankle kept seizing up by sitting on the sofa, at this point it seizing up was more painful than standing, so I got up and decided to help my mom with dinner and make myself useful. While helping, I went to get something from the second fridge in the garage and my dad pulled me aside and said that his friends had caught up to the guy that did it and got revenge for me. Apparently, my dad and his mates went to the park, walking around, looking for the man who fit the description. They found this guy and asked him if he had gotten into an altercation with someone in the park. He said yes. Before he could say more, they threw him to the ground, and started specifically stomping on both his hands. Smashing them to a pulp. They also took his phone and earphones and threw them down the drain. Every time I walk through that park, especially that bit where it happened, I get irrationally nervous and pay extreme amounts of attention to everyone I see. I never saw him again though. I have also been left with a knee that hurts every now and then if I accidentally bend it in certain ways. But that's okay, I just need more rest stops when walking long distances. Moral of this story, don't try to mug people, if you don't think you can deal with a group of alcohol-fueled Londoners, who are protective of your victim and his family. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.